Thank you for joining me today for this session, which is about processing streaming data with AWS Lambda. My name is Disha Kamra and I am AWS Solution Architect and Consultant here in Decode Solution, a Decode Cloud Solution. In this session, I will cover five topics. First, I will talk about streaming use cases and briefly explain the different Kinesis services. And then I will show you how you can build Jiro administration streaming processing with Kinesis data firehose. Lambda is very important service for processing and streaming the data. So I will talk about how to use it for on demand compute with Kinesis data streams. And in production system, it is important to know how to scale, monitor, and troubleshoot Kinesis. So I will provide some important guidance here. And finally, I will discuss how to optimize your Kinesis based application and highlight some best practices. Now, Amazon Kinesis make it collect, process, analyze, and real time streaming data for an application. This can help you to get timely insights and real, react quickly to new information. Kinesis provides cost-effective streaming data processing at any scale with the flexibility to choose the tool that best suits the need of your workload. Moving from traditional batch architecture to streaming architecture, it's create new capability. You go from early server logs to real time metrics or from weekly or monthly bills created by jobs to a system that monitor real time spending alerts and implementing spending caps in analyzing the click strips. It can move from daily report to our real time analysis and for customer like financial institution, you have fraud detection system critically. So this information can drive real time detection. Bringing real time capability to workload fundamentally change the capabilities and the problem that you can solve. Now there are wide variety of use cases for Kinesis. Here are just few of the common ones that we see from the real world scenarios. In video processing, Kinesis allow you to stream video from connected devices to AWS for analytics or machine learning, and the video can then be proceed by other services depending upon the needs of the workload. In institutional, uh, in industrial uh, automation, sensor collect the large amount of data for thousands of devices, and this data can be integrated by Kinesis and analyzed by Kinesis data analytics in real time to power dashboards for real time monitoring. Now the data can also be stored, analyzed historically, or used to train machine learning modules. You can use Kinesis to process streaming data from IoT devices such as consumer appliances, embedded sensor, and TV sets up, setup boxes. And you can use the data to send real time alerts or take action programmatically with, when the sensor extends certain operating threshold. The data connected via Kinesis can also be filtered and aggregated with Kinesis data firehose and then stored durably in S3 buckets to create data lakes. This enable analytics and machine learning for use cases like production optimization and predictive maintenance. Kinesis data stream can be used to collect log and even data from sources such as server, desktop and mobile devices. You can then build the Kinesis application to continuously process the data, generates metric power live dashboard and emit aggregated data into stores such as Amazon S3. Now under the Kinesis umbrella, there are four district services with their different capabilities. Kinesis data stream 
is high is a highly scalable and durable real time data streaming service that can continuously capture gigabytes of data per second from hundreds of thousands of sources. Amazon Kinesis video stream make it easy to securely stream video from connected devices to AWS for analytic machine learning and other processing. I'm not covering this service today but it's an important part of the Kinesis suit. So Kinesis Data uh, Firehose is a managed streaming service with minimum administration and it is the easiest way to capture, transfer and load data stream into AWS Data Store. You can also use the data collected from here for the real time analytics with the existing business intelligence tool. So Kinesis Data Analysis enables you to process data stream in real time with SQL or Apache Flinx. You can use familiar programming languages like SQL to build complex queries and then run continuously on the streaming data. Now generally this pattern, uh, this is the pattern for implementing a streaming data solution. Data producer continuously generate data and write it to the stream. A data producer could be a web server sending logs or it could be an application server sending metrics or it could be an Internet of Things device sending telemetry. And the streaming service then durably steers that store the data once it being received it's provide the temporary buffer to prepare the data and it's capable of handling high throughput the streaming service delivers the records of data consumer the consumer continuously processes the data and in many cases this means cleaning preparing and aggregating the records transferring the raw data into information the producer creates records and records contain three pieces of information. The partition key logically separates set of data and is hashed to route the data to the shard. And the sequence number is unique per partition key within the shard. It's assigned by Kinesis after the producer write to the stream and the data block is base 64 encoded payload upon one megabytes in size. Now using Kinesis enable you to decouple the data producer and consumer, which can help promote the development of a microservices model and make it easier to manage large workloads. Producer put records into the stream and consumer get record from streams and then process them. The delay between the time a record is put into a stream and the time it can retrieve it this is called the put of get delay is so it's typically less than one second. So Kinesis data streams application can start consuming the data from the stream almost immediately after the data is added. A Kinesis data stream is a set of one or a more shards and each shard contains a sequence of data records and each data record has a sequence number that's assigned by the service. If your data rate increases, you can increase or decrease the number of shard allocated to your stream. Kinesis can automatically encrypt the sensitive information as a producer enter into the stream and it use AWS KMS for encryption. Record ordering is maintained within each shard and you can configure record retention up to one year. Now a shard is uniquely identified sequence of data record in a stream and it provides a fixed unit of capacity. Each shard can support up to 1000 records per second for write ups to a maximum total data write rate of one megabyte per second, including partition keys. Each shard can support up to five transactions per second for reads up to a maximum total data read rate of two megabyte per second. The data capacity of your entire stream is a function of the number of shards that you specify for the stream and the total capacity of the stream is the sum of the capacity of the shard. Each shard contain records ordered by the arrival time and in a shard records from the 
trim horizon are the all available or all the available records since the beginning where the records from the tip or the latest are the most current records initially uh, available there. Now the difference is whether you want to start from the oldest record, the trim origin, or from right now the latest and skip data between the latest checkpoint. Now Lambda is one uh, is the on-demand compute uh, commute compute service at the heart of the AWS serverless portfolio and it can consume and process data from Kinesis Stream and the Lambda service pool Kinesis automatically and invoke your Lambda functions when the records are available. The benefit of using Lambda for streaming data processing is the Lambda manages scaling and that allow you to focus on the custom business logic to process data instead of underlying the infrastructure. Records are delivered as as a payload to the uh, Lambda function and you can configure how many records are in each batch up to 10,000 or 6 megabytes as a total payload limit. Lambda support a variety of custom runtime natively such as uh, Python node.net and you can also bring your own runtime too. Uh, there are customer, there are people, those who are running even PHP and COBOL till date. Lambda is uh, very unique to your choice of runtime. In the event source mapping, you can configure a starting point of the records and you can process only new records, all existing record or record created after a certain date. So once the Lambda function is finished processing, it returns the result to the Kinesis. Now for each shard, Lambda configure a polar that pulls the shard every second and invokes your data uh, Lambda function when records are available. The polar is managed internally by the Lambda service, as you see in this slide here. Internally, a record processor pull the Kinesis shard and batcher create the batches to the process by the function and invoker get batches and invoke your Lambda function. Now coming to the slide where we are going to talk about Kinesis Data Firehouse, it's a fully managed service that automatically provisions and manages and scale uh, the resources required to process and load your streaming data. You configure data in Firehose within minutes in the console, CLI, or cloud formation, and it then immediately available to receive data from thousands of data sources. Firehose can uh, optionally invoke a Lambda function to transfer data before it store results. It integrated with some AWS services like S3, Redshift, and Elasticsearch service. It can also deliver data to generic HTTP endpoints and directly to service provider from the console you point data of Firehouse to the destination. You need and use your existing applications and tool to analyze streaming data. One set of data warehouse loads streaming data into your destination continuously as they arrive and there is no ongoing administration and you don't need to manage shard. It's, it is also a pay as you go service where the cost is based upon users with no minimum fees. Now there are various sources of data firehouse. First is the direct put from the data producer. You can send data using the Kinesis agent, the data firehouse API or the AWS SDK. You can also configure your data firehouse delivery stream to automatically read data from an existing Kinesis data stream and you can use CloudWatch logs, even bridge or AWS IoT as a source. Apart from S3, Redshift and Elasticsearch, there are also a range of partners that you can use as destination for data firehouse. And this include Datadog, uh, Dentris, Logic Monitor, MongoDB, Neuralix, Perl, Sumo Logic. For HTTP endpoint delivery, there are defined request and response format. 
Endpoints have three minutes to respond to a request before a timeout occurs. So the frequency of a data delivery to S3 is determined by the buffer size and the buffer interval values that you configure for your delivery stream. So the service buffer incoming data uh, bef uh, before delivering it to S3. You can configure the buffer size between 1 to 128 MB or buffer interval between 60 to 900 seconds. The condition is uh, first will uh, will check whether it is running, then it will trigger the data delivery to the S3. When data delivery fa falls behind data writing to a stream, the service raises the buffer size dynamically and this allow to catch up and ensure that the data is delivered to the destination. Firehose also buffer incoming data before delivering it to Spulk. The buffer size is 5 MB and the buffer interval is 60 seconds. These are not configurable because they are optimized specially for the Spulk integration. The overall operation of a data firehouse stream look like this. The data source put record into the stream. Firehose invoke the data transmission, lambda function to process the record, and it uses the batch size value in the configuration to determine the number of records sent per invocation. The transform records are returned from lambda back to the firehouse stream and those record then forwarded to the destination. In this case, it is Amazon Elasticsearch service. And if your Lambda function invocation fail because of the network timeout or because you have reached the Lambda invocation limit, then Firehouse retire the invocation three times by default. If the invocation does not succeed, Firehouse then skip that batch of records or any skipped records are treated as unsuccessfully proceed record. If the status of data transformation of a record is processing failed, then Firehouse also treat the record as unsuccessfully proceed. Any unsuccessfully proceed record that are delivered to your S3 bucket in a folder called processing failed, this will include metadata indicating the number of attempt has been already made and time, time stamp for the last attempt and the Lambda function ARM. Firehouse can back up all the untrunk transformed records to your S3 bucket, uh, which is occurring while delivering the transform, transformed record to your destination. You can enable record backup when you create and update the delivery stream. Now, when you enable a data transformation, the service buffer incoming data by up to 3 MB by default. You can adjust this buffering size by using these processing configuration API. Firehouse then invoke the specific Lambda function asynchronously and with each buffered batch using the Lambda synchronized invocation mode. The Lambda function processes and return a list of transport record with a status of each record and the status is an attribute called result with the possible values of OK, dropped and or processing. Uh, failed in the result. So the return play load, the data attribute must be base encoded. The transform data is then sent back from Lambda to Firehouse and from there it is sent to the destination once the specified buffering size or buffering interval is reached whichever one happens the first. The data transformation lambda fun function can run up to five minutes. These functions are commonly used for to filter, enrich and convert data. In, filter, in filtering, uh, Lambda function can remove attribute from records or remove entire records based upon your business logic. Uh, some people use filtering to remove personally uh, identical uh, information from records and stream. For example, you can also enrich records by fetching data from other AWS services or from external data sources and one common one common process is to use 
geo IP servers to look up the geographical location of IP addresses and append this data to records. Just remember that the response size in uh, response size in asynchronously invoke data functions is 6 MB. In converting data, you have complete flexibility in modifying the record layout to match the needs of your data consumer. There are Lambda blueprints available as example of data conversion using this process and Firehouse passes the record ID along the each record to the Lambda during the invocation and each transform record must be written with the exact same record ID. The Firehouse invoke the data transformation Lambda function and scale up the function if the number of record in the stream grows when the destination is S3, Redshift or the Elasticsearch service, Firehose allow up to five outstanding Lambda implication per shot. When the destination is bulk, the quota is 10 outstanding Lambda implication per shard. You can monitor a data Firehose stream in several ways. Firehouse sent Amazon CloudWatch custom metrics and log with the detailed monitoring for each delivery stream. If you are using the Kinesis agent, this also publishes custom CloudWatch metrics to help access whether the agent is working as expected and the service also uses CloudTrail to log API calls and store the data in S3 bucket to maintain an API call history. To monitor data transformation, watch an alarm on execute process dot success metrics for this for the uh, for this for the delivery stream. Check the ratio of successful Lambda function to all Lambda function. This should be nearly 100% consistently and if it is not check the Lambda function logs to investigate further and to watch an alarm on the delivery two star dot success metrics, which is very similar and should also be nearly handed all the time. Let's take a look at Amazon Kinesis data stream, which is massively scalable, durable and real time data streaming service and how it is used with Lambda. Data streams make your streaming data available to multiple real time analytics applications within about a second of the data being collected. Producers send data to streams and you can use up to five consumer to produce records. If you use Kinesis data analytics or data firehouse on a stream, this count toward this subscription limit. Lambda is one type of a consumer and you can use the process data from a stream. The Lambda service pull each chart in your Kinesis stream for records and the event source mapping share read throughput with other consumer of the, sh the shard. Lambda read record in batches from the data stream and invoke your functions and the date the batch of records is delivered in an event or a payload. So let's take a look at shard processing. The Lambda service pulls the shard once per second for a set of Lambda records and then invokes the function with the batch of records. If the processing is successful, it moves on uh, to the next batch. If not, then it retry and error behavior will depend on the event source configuration. Using the default setting, Lambda invoke the function again with the same batch of records. It continues to do this until the batch is successful or the record expire out of the stream. This may not be idle for large batches, so you can also use the visit batch on function error feature and in the batch processing feature, this will often be caused by a single record and this feature helps find out record using this Lambda split the batch into two redrawing the oldest half of the record first. This splitting process is repeated recursively until it's find the one record that's causing the failure. 
The other batches process successfully and the batch with one record is retired until successful respecting the maximum number of retires and the record age in the stream. In this case, earlier retires do not count toward the maximum retire for records and that are retired the maximum number of the times or they have aged out of the stream. Those will discard it oftentimes. You will want to save these messages. So to do this configuration, a failure destination and instant those record will be sent there. You can scale the throughput of Kinesis data stream by adding shard to the stream. The easiest way to do this is with the update shard count API. To use this set a target shard count and the API will manage splitting and merging shard in the background. The process is asynchronized and it can cause short lift shard to be created in addition to the final shard. The short lift shards count towards the total limit of your account in the region and when using the API call, it is recommended that you specify a target shard count that the multiple of 25 percentage. So 25 percentage, 50 percentage, 75 percentage and so on. You can specify any target value within your shard limit. However, if you specify a target that isn't a multiply of 25 percentage, then the scaling action might take longer to complete for advanced user. You can use split shard and more shard directly there. This is an example of CLI command which I'm showing below in my slide here. Now what this is doing, this is scaling a stream from four to six shard and if the action is successful, the service will return 200 response with a JSON payload containing the stream name, the current shard count and the target shard count and this process is asynchronized, so the response occur before the scaling operation is complete. Using this API update shard count, there are some important limits. You cannot scale more than 10 times per rolling 24 hours period per stream. You cannot scale up to more than double the current shard count for a stream. You cannot scale down below half your current shard counter for a stream. You also cannot scale up to 10,000 shard in a stream or if your stream already have has more than 10,000 scale down unless the target is under 10,000. So many of these quota in place are, are soft limits. So you can connect with AWS support team if you need higher limits. Resharding enables you to increase or decrease the number of shard in stream to adopt the change in the rate of the data following through the stream. It is typically performed by an administrator or monitoring application in response to Kinesis metrics. You must specify the new starting hash value when performing in this command. This value determines the point of a split within the parent shard hash key space. In most cases, you want to do an even split, split after issuing the API call. The existing stream goes into the updating status and the stream scale up by splitting the shards. This create two new shard, uh, child shards that split the partition key space of the parent shard and the parent shard is still available, but it's enter in the state called closed. The consuming lambda function does not start receiving record from records from the child shard until it proceed all the records from the parent shard. Now once the last records are proceed in the parent shard, its status become expired and no more records will be proceed by the shard, whereas only one lambda function proceed the shard before splitting. Once the child shards are open and active, now there are two Lambda functions available. Kinesis data stream and CloudWatch are integrated and the metrics that you configure for your streams automatically collected and pushed to CloudWatch every minute. There are several useful metrics to monitor your stream and shard. The getRecord.int uh, integrate 
iterator age milliseconds metric measures the difference between the age of the last record consumed and the last latest record put to the stream. This is this is important to monitor since having too high of the iterator age in relation to your streams re uh, retention period can cause you the lost data as records expire from the stream. This value should generally not extend 50% of your stream retention and when you get to 100% of your stream retention data will be lost. If you are getting behind a temporarily stop gap is to increase the retention time of your stream. The better solution is to add more consumer to keep it up. When your consumer extend the read provi provisioned throughput existing metrics, they will start getting thorets and you won't be able to read from the stream. This can start backing up your stream, so monitor the average static for this metric and try to get this value as close to zero as possible. The same is true with the right provision through uh, throughput to extent uh, extent metrics and when extent produ uh, producer are throughout you won't able to put the records through the stream monitoring and the average of this statistics can help you determine if your producers are healthy. The put record dot success and put records dot success metrics are incremented whenever producers succeed in sending data to your stream. Monitoring for spike or drop can help you monitor the health of the producer and catch the problem in early stage. You will want to watch the average statics for whichever the two of the two API calls you are using because CloudWatch splits the two APIs into two different metrics. GetRecords.success is the consumer side of equivalent of PutRecords.success. Looks for spikes and drop in the metrics to ensure that your consumer is healthy and the average is the most useful statistics for this purpose. Now there are several useful metrics for monitoring Lambda function consumer. Set alarm on errors and threats, and when these go over zero, you can also investigate further and also monitor spike in duration, which may indicate if the consumer is slowing down. So you can take corrective action. Lambda emits the iterator age matrix when the function finishes processing a batch of record. The metric indicates how old the last function in the batch uh, was when the processing finishes. So if your function is processing new events, you can use the iterator age to estimate the uh, latency between when a record is added and when the function processes it. If the iterator age start to grow rapidly, here are some troubleshooting steps and question that can help prevent the problem. How many Lambda functions are subscribed to the stream? Can you add another consumer to help the process record? Are any functions showing any error or threats on the in their matrix? Are you seeing a large increase in the incoming records or incoming bytes? That indicate a growth input in the producer data. Instead of allowing a function to error out, you could use the try cache handling to log the error and log the records that cause errors and then return successfully. This allow Lambda to process the next batch. You can also scale the Lambda concurrency per shard by using the parallelism factor, which, uh, which I will be discussing in a few minutes. Increasing Lambda memory can also increase the performance of Lambda consumer since it increased the amount of virtual CPU and compute power available for processing. The read provision through put extinct metrics can warn you when you are reaching the five reads per second or two MB per seconds limit. If you can remove subscri uh, subscri uh, subscribers, this can prevent the issue. Uh, 
Remember, the Kinesis Data Analytics and Kinesis Firehouse are also subscribers, so you can remove this if you are not if they are not needed, and if you need all the subscriber or uh, subscribe on the stream, one way to solve this is to use the Enhance Fan Out. This feature enables consumer to receive records from the stream with a throughput of of up to 2 megabyte of data per second per shard and this throughput is dedicated which means the, that the consumer using enhanced fan out don't contend with other consumer that are receiving data from the stream. Kinesis pushes data record from the stream to consumer and using enhanced fan out meanings. These consumer do not need to pull for data to see how this work for the Lambda consumer. And uh, uh, so you can see the compute blog post at s12d.com enhanced fan out, which I have already mentioned in this uh, slide. In this next session, I will talk about some features and configuration available for optimizing the performance of your Kinesis data stream application. Lambda consumers can use enhanced fan out and HTTP2 to minimize latency and maximum read throughput. You can create a data stream consumer with enhanced fan out and stream consumer can get a dedicated connection to each shard that doesn't impact other applications reading from the stream. The dedicated throughput can help if you have many applications reading the same data or you are reprocessing a stream with a large records. Kinesis pushes record to Lambda over HTTP2, which increase performance by up to 65%. Now standard consumer use the pull method over HTTP, whereas EFO consumer use the push model over HTTP. A standard consumer with five consumer would average 200 millisecond for of latency each. It is up to one second for all five and using enhanced fan out, um, the consumer are completely independent and did not impact each other even with five consumer. Each consumer averages about 70 millisecond of latency. The read throughput is dedicated. So this provides significantly fast throughput for many workload, but note there are an additional charge of using this feature. By default, there are there is one instant of Lambda function per shard in a stream. You can increase the number of concurrent Lambda functions that are processing shard by changing the parallelism factor and the batches maintained in order processing per partition key. This feature is available for both Kinesis data stream and for DynamoDB streams. Changing the factor from one to two, you can see in this diagram how each shard now have two instances of consuming Lambda function processing batches in parallel. The result is that the record are processed in half of the time, all things being equal, and you can also increase this value to maximum of 10. Kinesis has per shard write limit to 1 MB per second or 1000 messages per second. If your data producers are creating many small messages, you may reach the limit of messages while still being under 1 MB per second limit. Having many small messages can lead to lower throughput per shard and it can increase the cost of the workload as well. You can often resolve this issue by using the aggregation to increase the payload size, reduce the number of messages and improve the throughput. There are two libraries commonly used to help with this. The Kinesis producer library, er, library which is known as KPL and Kinesis aggregation library. The KPL provides a layer of abstraction of ingesting data and offers a synchronized and asynchronized interface. It's, it is recommended to use the asynchronized interface wherever possible. The KPL handles batches and multi-threading and also 
emits metrics to CloudWatch so you can monitor performance. For Java users, Kinesis client library uh, integrates streamlessly with the KPL and can help on the consumer side, otherwise for consumer using other runtimes. The Kinesis aggregation library can help simplify the de-aggregation process if you use this technique. For streams with low number of records, you may find the consuming Lambda function is invoked with small batches, which increases the processing cost per message. If the latency sensitivity of the workload is less important, for example, an archiving workload, you can change this behavior to wait for more messages to arrive before invoking the Lambda function. By default, Lambda invoke your function as soon as the records are available in the stream. If the batch that Lambda reads from the stream has only one record in it, Lambda send only one record to the function. So to, uh, so to avoid this, you can tell the event source to buffer records for up to five minutes by configuring a batch window. And before invoking the function, Lambda continues to re-record from the stream until it gathers the full batch or until the batch window expire. This is an additional knob to tune the streaming trigger and you can set the time to wait between triggering up to five minutes to seven seconds and the batch size is still respected and it will trigger on full batches before the batch window is up. This work for both Kinesis data stream and DynamoDB streams trigger. Kinesis data analytics is the easiest ways to transform and analyze streaming data in real time. You can interactively query streaming data using standard SQL and you can build Apache Flink application using Java, Python and Scala. You can also build Apache Beam application using Java to data analytics streams. Now you can use data uh, Kinesis data analytics for many use cases to process data continuously and drive instant in a near, near real time. There are three common use cases for Kinesis data analytics. The streaming ETL, you can prepare data before loading into data lake or data warehouse, normalizing data with a specified schema and reducing and or eliminating data ETL steps. For continuous metrics generation, KDA, uh, calculate statistics and trade over time. You can use this to create real time leaderboards in games or major sensor averages in IoT devices over a rolling time window. Finally, for responsive real time metrics, you can send real time alarm and notification when certain metrics reach a predefined threshold or when your application detects enemies. In all cases, the process is the same. You initially capture data via Kinesis Data Firehouse or Kinesis Data Stream, and then Kinesis Data Analytics is the consumer for those three. The output is then sent to downstream consumer and tools for alert for alerting the virtualization and distribution. Kinesis Data Analytics implement the ANSI 2008 SQL standard with extensions. These extensions enable you to process streaming data using SQL. And if you are building a SQL application, there are a couple of important concepts I want to briefly introduce. The first is the stream. You map the streaming source to, to an in to an in application stream that is created using the SQL statement like this. Data continuously flow from the streaming source into the in application stream and the stream works like a table that you can query using SQL statements, but it can call a stream because it represents continuous data flow. You can have multiple writer insert data into an in application stream and then uh, there can be a multiple reader selecting from the stream. This is 
think of this as an uh, in application stream that implement a publish subscribe messaging paradigm and in this paradigm data can be proceed interpreted and forwarded by the castle of streaming SQL statement without having to be stored in traditional relational database. Isn't that beautiful? Once you create an in application stream, then you can pump data into it using a pump, which is defined using the statement like this. A pump is a continuous insert query that is running to insert the data from an in application stream into another in application stream. So the SQL queries in your application code execute continuously over in application streams and these streams represent unbounded data that flows continuously through your application. To get a result from the continuously updating input, you bound queries using the windows defined in the term of time. These are also called windowed SQL. For time-based window query, you specify a time-based window size. You can specify a query to process record in a tumbling window, sliding window, or a stagger window, depending on your application. Sliding window generate data continuously using the fixed time or a row count interval. Tumbling windows aggregate data using the district time-based window, and these open and close at regular intervals, such as every 15 minutes and stagger window use key time based windows and these windows open as data arrive and the key allow for the multiple overlapping windows. If you need to use tumbling window in your aggregation, there is relatively new feature that can help. Lambda new support streaming analytic calculation for Kinesis. This allow developer to calculate aggregates near real time and pass that state across multiple Lambda invocation. This provide an alternative way to build analytic solution and a tumbling window in Lambda is a fixed site. Non overlapping time interval of up to 15 minutes. So you specify the duration in the event source mapping between the stream and the Lambda function when you apply a tumbling window to a stream. Items in the stream are grouped by the window and sent to processing Lambda function. The function returns the state value that is passed to the next tumbling window. And in this diagram, I have shown a stream that has four window over 60 minutes. The first window contain one and five and the function sum, the function sum them and return the value six. The sum return is then passed to the second tumbling window, which adds three, two and seven, and that's bring the total of 18 and that passed to the third tumbling window and so on. In practical, tumbling window and lambda looks like this. The incoming event in the same as before, Kinesis provide an array of records. What's different is the handful of new attributes and there is a start and end time to the window and the state attribute. The state is initially empty and the first invocation return the value in this state. In this case, the item count and the sales total when Kinesis invoke the second Lambda function, it passes the state it received from the first. When the final invocation occur, there, are, there is a new attribute in this event payload indicating that it is the last one. You can then close the drill B, persist the calculation result in S3, DynamoDB, uh, EFS or another downstream service. Now, when you are building data streaming solution that use Lambda consumer, you can do everything in the AWS management console. But once you get familiar with the building these applications, it is often easier to move to an infrastructure as code solution. The AWS serverless application model are also known as SAM. Let you express the Lambda function and event source mapping in a code template using the SAM CLI. You can then deploy these template into your AWS account and these can help create repeatable uh, versionable deployment that you can share across your team. 
Here is an example of a SAM template that deploy a Kinesis data stream, a consumer, a Lambda function, and, and IAM resources needed to run the application. You can see and deploy the entire example in the URL show on the slide. The first resource is the Kinesis stream itself, which is defined with a shard count of one. The next resource defined the Kinesis stream consumer and it said the stream ARN, that is the Amazon resource name and the consumer name. The next template defined the Lambda function to consume the record from the Kinesis stream and the SAM template specify the code location, runtime and handle name. The event source mapping references the application consumer for the Kinesis stream. It set the sliding uh, siding permit position to the latest and it could have used the trimmed origin instant of the batch size of 100 records. The batch size specify the number of records that are the polars batchers gather before it's invoked the function. Finally, the output section of the template provide references to the resources that have been created and this entire SAM template can be deployed from the command line using SAM CLI. We have reviewed some of the capability of Kinesis suite of services. I want to leave you with a few journal best, uh, best practices that can help you operate the production streaming workload. It is important to understand the choice between the Kinesis data firehose and the Kinesis data stream. The, uh, the firehose is fully managed and scalable service that requires no administration. So if you are streaming workload, and it's storing data on one of its target like S3 or Redshift, this is often the best choice. The data stream provides more flexibility, but you must monitor the shard actively and understand how to scale up and down as needed. So solution architects frequently advise customer to design their streaming application with your data consumer in mind. You may have a variety of different type of consumer with different needs and working backward from their requirement and can help you build a solution that provide the most value. If the payload received by Lambda function, then you may receive data B logs with inconsistent data structure and varying the attributes. Generally, it is best to transform this raw data into aggregation friendly records that downstream the consumer and can work with more easily. Before getting to production, we recommend becoming familiar with the mechanism for monitoring and scaling stream. Ahead of time, you can build CloudWatch dashboard containing many of the important metrics to monitor performance so you are ready before going to the production. Same way, understanding the trouble of troubleshooting steps to tackle common streaming issues can also save significant time and I have covered a few of those common one earlier to this session. Thank you so much for joining the session with us. I believe that you have enjoyed the session and have got some uh, detailed briefing about the Genesis and the services offered by them. Get in touch with us for any query further. If you want to inquire about any of the consulting services or you can drop an email at info at decodecloudsolution.com or you can visit our website tap 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 dot decodecloudsolution.com. Thank you again.